Welcome to Fibrinolysis, where we discuss the process by which the fibrin clot gets broken down into its degradation products. From this video, we have the following take-home points. During fibrinolysis, plasmin cleaves fibrin and inactivates factor 13. Plasmin is activated from its proenzyme plasminogen by tissue type plasminogen activator in the intravascular space and urokinase in the extravascular space. Regulators of fibrinolysis include plasminogen activator inhibitor, alpha-2 and alpha-2 antiplasmin, and thrombin activatable fibrinolysis inhibitor. From our previous video, you may recall the coagulation cascade, the process by which we generate thrombin to form a strong fibrin clot. The process ends with fibrinogen, which through the action of thrombin gets cleaved to fibrin. Fibrin monomers combine to form a fibrin strand. Fibrin strands combine to form a fibrin polymer. Fibrin polymers are acted upon by activated factor 13, which leads to cross-linked fibrin. Over the next few minutes, our focus will be on cross-linked fibrin. Cross-linked fibrin must eventually undergo fibrinolysis, which is a process by which the cross-linked fibrin gets cut into its constituent components which are known as fibrin degradation products. The agent of fibrinolysis is plasmin. Plasmin primarily cleaves the polymerized fibrin strand. Let's take a minute to discuss how we come to get plasmin. Plasmin exists as a proenzyme known as plasminogen. Plasminogen is acted upon by tissue type plasminogen activator. Tissue type plasminogen activator acts on plasminogen to convert it to plasmin. Plasmin acts in a positive feedback loop to keep itself activated. Tissue type plasminogen activator activates plasmin in the intravascular space, while in the extravascular space, the activator of plasmin is known as urokinase. Urokinase is also produced in a plasmin positive feedback loop where plasmin activate, ur activates urokinase's precursor, prourokinase, to keep itself activated. Now, let's focus on plasmin's interaction with cross-linked fibrin. As plasmin begins to degrade fibrin, it also cleaves factor 13A, which keeps it from cross-linking fibrin. Plasmin is then able to break the fibrin clot into its component fibrin degradation products. Plasmin activity is regulated by plasminogen activator inhibitor 1, also known as PI1. PI1 works with PI2 to inhibit tissue type plasminogen activator's conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. Another regulator of plasmin is alpha-2 antiplasmin. Alpha-2 antiplasmin inhibits plasmin by complexing to thrombi and making them resistant to plasmin. Once plasmin is inhibited, it stops cleaving fibrin and factor 13. The final regulator of fibrinolysis is thrombin-activatable fibrinolysis inhibitor, TAFI. TAFI blocks fibrinolysis by diminishing the incorporation and activation of plasminogen. This decreases pl plasminogen conversion, leading to, um, leading to delayed clot lysis. To summarize, we learned the following. During fibrinolysis, plasmin cleaves fibrin and inactivates factor 13. Plasmin is activated from its proenzyme plasminogen by tissue type plasminogen activator in the intravascular space and urokinase in the extravascular space. Regulators of fibrinolysis include plasminogen activator inhibitor, alpha-2 antiplasmin, and thrombin-activatable fibrinolysis inhibitor. This ends the video on fibrinolysis breaking up the fibrin clot.